everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to show you all of the latest news about our projects as well as our company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can just skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. This week we don't have any further information on Solomon Cain or Enchanters, but let's get to everything else. For Joan of Arc today, we have a few more stills of the resin masters for the Teutonic Knights expansion and the new stretch goals that the factory sent to us a little bit ago. As a reminder, when we have more information on when mass production has officially begun, and at least an approximation of when it possibly concludes, we'll let you know. Until then, enjoy the resin masters and the music. Busters today, we have a short update on the Errata Packs. They have finally hit the EU port and should be heading to Meeple Logistics soon after clearing customs. The ship bound for North America should be hitting the port this week. All the Errata Packs will be shipped from Meeple Logistics and Quartermaster Logistics. Meeple Logistics will handle shipments to the EU, Asia, Australia, and New Zealand, and the rest of the world. Quartermaster Logistics will handle shipments to the U.S. and Canada, so be on the lookout for those soon. A short update for Super Fantasy Brawl today, the same boats that are carrying the Reichbusters Errata Packs are also carrying the French Force of Nature replacement cards for our eShop orders. So those will be going out soon too. Now if you're a Kickstarter backer and have not yet received your replacement cards from HK Post, please let us know by contacting our customer support team at support at mythicgames.net and we'll be able to assist you. For Steam Watchers today, we wanted to briefly mention that the factory is pre-packaging orders now, so departures should be coming up very soon. Now would be a great time to double check your address information on GameFound just to make sure you're up to date and ready to go. You will, of course, be receiving an address verification email when the product begins arriving at our hubs, but you can never be too prepared, right? As Quest Design wraps up for Darkest Dungeon and we prepare for our multi-expansion playtests, let's get back a bit and talk in detail about our previous focus, the bosses. This time, we'll pick them one by one and talk specifics in this new series the boss spotlight, starting with one of the most iconic bosses in the game, the Necromancer of the Ruins. An old colleague of the Ancestor, resurrected with his intellect intact, the Necromancer constantly brings the dead back to life in an endless cycle of unlife. As the dead are restless while he's present, his Hamlet threat abilities are focused on the graveyard, starting from blocking it at first level to forcing heroes to spend their days on guard duty there at his second and third levels. In the dungeons, he constantly raises the dead after the heroes. At his first level, all non-unholy monsters are permanently removed from the game after a battle ends, making heroes face more and more unholy monsters as the campaign moves on. 
This ability also thins the monster deck, making stronger monsters more likely to appear later on. At his second level, he makes sure that a Bone Captain, a level 2 monster, is always present in battles. And at third level, he will resurrect the first monster that the heroes kill in each battle, thus making the party face five monsters every time. These dead raising abilities are also his strength in combat. Heroes will face him in a tight room, starting the battle in direct conflict. He only acts once during each round, but each of his skills, whether it be a slashing damage dealing blow or a hauntingly stressful attack, will always summon an unholy monster on his side. And these monsters continue to grow stronger the higher his level. The heroes must maintain a balance, spending their actions between battling his minions and dealing with the necromancer himself. If they focus too much on him, the undead will swarm. But if they focus too much on his minions, then they'll have to deal with a healthy necromancer slashing and stressing them relentlessly each round. But that's about it for our first boss spotlight. We hope that you liked it and got a good idea of how the Necromancer can affect your campaign. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or if you just want to see what he might spoil because, frankly, he does it a lot. We all know it. He tries to hide it. But he can't. But that's it for this week. Stay home. Stay safe. Play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care. <laughs>